All right, tech family, I've now done a good amount of testing on Apple's new M2 laptops, as well as Intel's 13th gen processors for PC laptops with Windows. And I've even started testing AMD Ryzen 7000 series processors, although unfortunately their newer Zen 4 ones have been delayed, so I haven't tested them yet. Anyway, I feel I've got a good sense of how things are starting to shake out in 2023. So today, I wanted to give you my updated thoughts on a very contentious topic, whether you should buy a Mac or a PC laptop. So the way I'm gonna do this video is to first talk about the benefits of each, and then at the end, go over who I think should buy a Mac and who should buy a PC. And I have to be honest, some of this video is in response to people who say I'm just recommending Apple laptops right now, which couldn't be further from the truth. Let's get into it. When it comes to buying a laptop, I'm a big believer in buying one that gets the basics right. Think about how much time you spend on your laptop just doing basic tasks, just viewing content on screen, typing on the keyboard and using the trackpad. Now, Compare that to how much time you spend doing intense high performance tasks, compiling code, rendering a video, or running an intensive AAA game. For most people, that's far less. Therefore, I am laser focused on ensuring you get a laptop at a minimum that gets the basics right. A crisp bright screen, a comfortable keyboard, and an accurate trackpad. And while you are using the laptop, I don't want you to be distracted by silliness, such as an uncomfortably warm feeling chassis or loud fan noise. Heck, I'd sacrifice a bit of performance for a laptop that gets the basics right. I can always wait for a task to complete, but if the keyboard is uncomfortable to use, there is absolutely nothing I can do about that. Now, in recent times, Apple has been the only manufacturer to reliably deliver on this. Plus, their laptops include a lot of other creature comforts that are super important in 2023. A top-notch webcam, great speakers, good port selection, and long battery life. This getting the basics right, it sounds simple and it should be, but PC laptops fail to do this time and time again. Foundationally, it's about effective product management truly understanding what people need and investing the dollars the right way to ensure people get it. And when you understand what consumers want, you can take calculated risks to leap your product forward. Apple switch to their own M1 silicon is the perfect example of that. It was a risk, but boy did it pay off. It revolutionized laptops, heralding in a new era of long battery life and proving that we do not have to put up with jet engine fan noise or feel uncomfortably warm temperatures when running high performance tasks on our laptops. But Apple certainly isn't perfect. They have taken risks and failed. Remember back in 2016 when they removed their regular keyboard and replaced it with the butterfly one? That was the year they also replaced the function row on the keyboard with the touch bar and replaced all their ports with only USB-C ones. That was an example of not listening to what consumers really want. And back then, I certainly was not recommending Apple laptops at all. But Apple learned from their mistakes and changed, leading to the excellent products that they have today. Switching over to PC laptops with Windows or Linux for that matter, things couldn't be more different. What I'm experiencing is a much broader offering, but less quality, specifically when it comes to that core of what makes a laptop, which as you've heard me call it before, getting the basics right. For example, HP for years has put light colored keyboards in their silver laptops with a light colored backlight. This makes it very hard to see which key is which in certain lighting conditions. This is a silly mistake that just shouldn't happen. PCs are often noticeably lower quality devices than MacBooks, even Razer whose blade is one of the best built and most expensive PC laptops around, isn't at the same build quality level as a MacBook. Its black chassis is easily chipped. My unit chipped, as did another laptop reviewer that I know. And trying to get support for a PC laptop is a pain. How many PC manufacturers have stores in almost every major city like Apple's where you can just walk in and get your laptop serviced? And yes, I know they might send it away, but it's still better than in the case of PC laptops. But by being so focused on getting the basics right as Apple is, they miss out on serving a huge number of user segments that PC manufacturers do. Perfect example, if you can't afford $800 US for a MacBook Air with M1, there are tons of decent PC laptops available to you. They probably won't be as good as a MacBook Air when it comes to getting the basics right, but they're probably 80 to 90% there, and they are a hell of a lot cheaper. 
On the other end of the spectrum, you can get high performance PC laptops that completely annihilate even the most powerful MacBook Pros with the new M2 Max chip. I mean, look at how much the XMG Neo 16 with Intel's i9-3900HX processor dominates. This is especially important for those looking to enjoy the latest AAA games. A high-end PC laptop with a powerful NVIDIA 4000 series graphics will offer higher frame rates at higher resolutions than Mac laptops will. And because of that, game developers don't focus on Mac. So you aren't going to find anywhere near the same selection of game titles available on Mac OS as you will Windows. But the variety of PC laptops doesn't stop there. If you're someone who wants a laptop that can be upgraded later on, there are plenty of PC laptops with upgradable RAM, storage, and Wi-Fi. Heck, there are even fully upgradable laptops like Framework, where every component is upgradable. And by the way, it's normally significantly cheaper to upgrade the laptop yourself rather than configuring those upgrades from the manufacturer at time of purchase. And an upgradable laptop massively takes the stress out of buying it. When I bought my Macs, I was super stressed about which configuration to get. Did I upgrade them enough so I will have enough performance for my future needs? Or did I overpay for upgrades that I will never use? And talking about specking up a Mac, their upgrades can get insanely expensive. But there's more. You won't find a convertible Mac laptop with a touchscreen and one you can write on. As you can see, there are strong cases for both Apple laptops as well as Windows PC ones. It really depends on which user segment you fall into. With that in mind, here's my guide on who should buy which. Gamers, you should be buying a PC laptop. That's it, no ifs, buts about it. And that's even if you are also doing something that Apple specialize in, like content creation as well as gaming. That's because if you don't get a PC laptop, you'll be sacrificing too much on the gaming side. Next, if you are shopping on a budget that is less than 700 US dollars, which I know many people are, you should be buying a PC laptop. There are plenty of good ones available. I say 700 by the way, not 800, as many PC laptops that are in that 700 to 800 dollar range, you may as well save a bit more for a MacBook Air with M1. Next, if you're one of the rare people who uses your laptop in tablet mode and likes to draw in it and doesn't already do that on an iPad, then you should buy a Windows convertible laptop. I said rare people, by the way, because I have never seen someone use one of those convertible laptops as a tablet. And I've been to coffee shops, laptop stores, and co-working spaces all over the world, from Bangalore, India, to New York City, to Sydney, Australia. If you are a content creator and aren't doing AAA gaming, Apple laptops are far better for you. If you get one with Apple's M series, you'll be able to edit videos, photos, and music as easily as cutting through warm butter. Unlike on a PC laptop, you won't feel uncomfortable heat from the chassis and you won't hear distracting fan noise. Plus, you'll even be able to do this while on battery power. If you use specific software that only runs on Windows or Mac OS, then your choice is simple. And I probably should have mentioned that one earlier as that's a restriction. And finally, the remaining people who have the money to buy a laptop above that 800 US dollar mark and are doing casual tasks on their laptop like office work, browsing the web, school, etc. You should absolutely try to get an Apple laptop. They're just better all round devices, even if a similarly priced PC laptop comes with higher specs like more RAM. The many basics that Macs get right will likely be more noticeable to you. Well, let me know in a comment below what you think of how I classify the state of Mac vs PC and my buyer's guide. I'm very interested to read what you have to say and I certainly read all your comments. If you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that like button and get subscribed. Not only does it show your appreciation for the time spent making these videos, and boy does it take a lot of time, but as I always say, it makes my mother very proud. If you need personal help, by the way, picking a laptop, make sure to check out our Discord server where vetted laptop advisors are standing by to help you out. I'll place a link to that down below. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.